Hi, my name is Ignacio Cascudo from INDEA Software Institute in Madrid, and I'm going to present this joint work with uh, Bernardo David from uh, IT University Copenhagen, which is called uh, Albatros. So as you can see from the title and also the embedded image in this picture, our paper is about uh, random coin toss protocols, essentially. Uh, we are motivated by the notion of a random beacon that periodically outputs randomness to uh, to, to parties in, in certain protocols. Um, and uh, more interestingly for us, we are uh, interested in this application uh, to proof of stake blockchains where we need uh, randomness every now and then to run the lotteries that uh, will um, select a leader for the next block. Uh, in such applications, we uh, we want uh, beacons with public verifiability and guaranteed output delivery. And there are a number of ways to go about uh, uh, constructing such beacons uh, based on this different uh, cryptographic primitives. So for example, uh, we have verifiable random functions that allow to construct beacons with very little communication but uh, such constructions are uh, biasable to some extent by the adversary um, by a, a strategy that is that the adversary uh, may not uh, communicate the output of uh, such a, of an evaluation of such function and uh, later we will see some uh, related or uh, similar problem in in, in a different context um, on the other hand we also have verifiable delay functions which are not subject to this attack but it is difficult to find parameters, practical parameters for these uh, constructions uh, because they rely on timing assumptions and uh, one needs to find a set of parameters that is both efficient and uh, has guaranteed security. Um, another uh, way of constructing such beacons is uh, based on publicly verifiable secret chain schemes and this is the, the one that we are going to focus on in this uh, work. So just to mention a little bit about the model or to be a bit more concrete, so we have n parties that want to create some uniform random element in some finite set and that are assisted by a public bulletin board so they can publish information in this board. Um, and then we have an adversary that corrupts up to t uh, parties in the protocol and uh, what is relevant here is also that the adversary is uh, rushing so uh, the corrupted parties may be the last to speak in a given round. Um, as we said before, we also have the requirement that uh, the protocol should be auditable by external verifiers. So in order to understand how a publicly verifiable uh, secret sharing comes in the picture, let's first uh, see what the problems are with more elementary approaches. So in order to establish a, a random uh, output, uh, we could have that each party chooses a random element uh, in uh, some finite group and then output uh, the sum of these elements if the group is written additively. So then the output is uniform is that if at least one of the inputs, the, the, the chosen values by the parties, is uh, uniformly random and independent from the others. However, in the situation where the adversary is uh, rushing, uh, this is uh, not, uh, not possible to do because the adversary will just wait until the honest parties announce their inputs and then decide on the input of uh, say one corrupted party um, and completely fix the output that the adversary wants. Um, so instead we could think that uh, each party commits uh, to uh, to their inputs and then only once uh, all have committed then the commitments are open and uh, we again output the the, the right the, the, the sum of the elements. Um, now the adversary cannot uh, anymore uh, fix the, the output that, that he wants uh, because he doesn't see the inputs of the honest parties when he decides on the inputs of the uh, corrupt, corrupted parties. However, um, what the adversary can still do is to decide not to open some of the commitments, some of the commitments of the corrupted parties after seeing the, the honest openings. Of, uh, yeah, of the honest parties. Um, and so if we define the output of the protocol to be just the sum of the uh, opened values, because that's the only thing that we know, uh, the problem is that the adversary can just choose uh, between uh, two to the t possible outputs by just uh, waiting until all the honest parties have announced their, their uh, openings 
and uh, um, well, deciding which uh, subset of corrupted parties will open uh, their their commitments and which uh, will not. So we could we can also not uh, say that the, the the protocol aborts if uh, at least one party aborts because then we wouldn't have guaranteed auto delivery and also um, even if the protocol terminates we are not sure if that is because they all everyone is honest or because the adversary just uh, happened to see that the, the the result that was going to happen uh, was beneficial for him. So um, for that. To, to fix that, we introduce publicly verifiable secret sharing, um, and uh, uh, we all know what secret sharing is. It's a way by which the uh, uh, dealer can distribute um, a secret among a number of parties. Um, so she sends a share to each of these parties, and uh, this is done in some way that um, well, a prescribed prescribed sets of, of parties can recover the secret from the shares while other uh, subsets of parties can uh, have no information about the secret. In uh, a publicly verifiable secret sharing, this is done by... Um, so the, the, the delivery of the shares is done by encryption. So basically, all uh, uh, parties uh, that are going to receive shares have a public key and a secret key. And the dealer uh, well encrypts the ith share under the ith uh, public key. This allows the dealer to uh, create a, a proof that the sharing is correct. And uh, so, for example, if you think of, uh, of Shamir's secret sharing, um, the proof would just uh, say that uh, encrypted shares are indeed evaluations of a polynomial of certain degree in the in, in certain points. Uh, while also the, the 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 parties that are going to reconstruct the secret later on. They can prove that they are doing that correctly, that they are de decrypting their shares correctly and combining them correctly. And once we, so how, how do we uh, use PVSS to construct a random beacon? Well, um, we simply replace uh, the commitments before, or we implement the commitments before by uh, uh, PVSS, the, the, the values. So that allows um, uh, us to determine at the point where uh, everyone has already committed, we can determine now a set of correctly PVSS values. And this is going to uh, be the set of, of outputs that we will sum to get the, the, the final output of the protocol. Um, so, um, and then, uh, in order, I mean, when, when the parties open the commitments, if a party that correctly shares their, their value doesn't open the, this commitment, this value can still be reconstructed by, by the rest of the parties because it was a correct sharing. So Uroboros used uh, um, this type of beacon uh, by using the PVSS by Schumachers, um, which is uh, secure for uh, any uh, well, honest majority. Uh, so some details about this uh, PVSS, since we are going to be based on, on it. Um, basically, we use a, a cyclic group of uh, prime order Q, where the DDH assumption, assumption holds. And, um, and the, the, the parties that are going to receive the, the shares, they all have, uh, they all choose a secret key in, in set Q. And they publish, uh, H, uh, a generate, uh, public generator H uh, raised to that, uh, to that value. And now the dealer, in order to share a random secret, so she chooses a random polynomial of degree at most t, and she publishes the ith public key raised to the ith evaluation of this polynomial for all i. Um, now, she can also prove that this is done correctly, that the exponents uh, here are actually the, the evaluations of the of, of a polynomial of the right degree by just uh, committing to the coefficients of the of the polynomial uh, and, and this is done by using some other generator of the group and, um, and once uh, she has posted all this g raised to the coefficients of the polynomial um, everyone can compute uh, g raised to the evaluation of a polynomial in any point and uh, by using this then in a discrete logarithm equality proof uh, we uh, eventually prove that these exponents here are evaluations of a polynomial of the right degree. 
to the crypt, uh, well, we need T plus one uh, parties. We need T plus one honest parties, but we have those because uh, we have an honest majority. And um, the, the parties simply decrypt uh, the shares, meaning that they, they obtain these values, H raised to the, to the valuation of, of the polynomials. Uh, they prove that they, they have uh, computed these values correctly. And then uh, anyone can combine uh, these shares in order to create uh, H uh, raised to the valuation of the polynomial in, in the point zero. And this is going to be defined as the secret. And this is done by uh, Lagrange interpolation in the exponent, since uh, an evaluation of the polynomial is a linear combination of t plus 1 uh, other evaluations of the polynomial. Um, once we, we have done that, so basically uh, several parties will have correctly shared their, their, uh, their values, and then we have reconstructed either by having the parties just open their values or uh, by having the rest of the parties reconstruct uh, these secrets. Um, so we have constructed uh, several values of this form, and then in order to uh, to output, uh, basically you, we, we just output the, the group operation applied to all, all these values. And this works, and uh, the, we are interested in this uh, paper, especially in the computational complexity of the process. And uh, this beacon requires uh, O n cubed exponentiations in G per party, if, if we say that G is, uh, is order n. Uh, it's true that the exponentiations are maybe not full exponentiations in the sense that um, um, most of these exponentiations have bounded uh, exponents. However, when n is large, uh, this really becomes uh, almost like O n cubed uh, uh, random exponentiations in G, so to speak. Um, um, in, in, in another paper, uh, Bernardo and I had uh, uh, this uh, construction scrape where we modify this proof of, of correctness of sharing and, uh, and we can bring uh, the complexity of the beacon to be uh, O n squared exponentiations in G per party. Uh, note that in both cases, um, Scrape and uh, Schumacher's PVSS, the output uh, of the corresponding beacon is uh, just one element in the group. In this work, we present several contributions to this line of work. And uh, the first one is that we relax uh, this uh, corruption threshold and uh, we will consider t uh, to be uh, some constant times n, but uh, constant is smaller than one half. And then we can show that uh, we obtain a very nice uh, amortized computational complexity improvements. And this is based on two techniques, the use of packed semi secret sharing with some certain modified reconstruct, uh, reconstruction uh, schedule that I will explain uh, later. And the other is the use of uh, nice uh, randomness extraction technique um, based on uh, t resilient functions. Uh, the second contribution is uh, actually applies to any value of t smaller than n half, so it can be also applied to the previous beacons, and is that uh, we improve uh, uh, the step of uh, sharing, of proving sharing correctness. And uh, this is a concrete improvement, it's not asymptotical, but uh, it, it, it is uh, considerable. And uh, the, the third uh, improvement is the, that we construct uh, two versions of the protocol that are secure under the universal composability framework. Uh, in order to uh, explain the, 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 the first contribution, so say that L is, the, is a value such, such that uh, T is smaller than N minus L uh, divided by 2. So basically L will be a linear function uh, in N. Uh, and then uh, we modify uh, the, the procedure of sharing by taking, instead of uh, Shamir secret sharing, we take packed Shamir secret sharing where uh, the dealer chooses a polynomial of degree t plus l minus 1 and then uh, we will def the number of secrets will be l. Um, so the sharing is basically the same. Um, the reconstruction, uh, we, we need t plus l parties, but under our assumption we have the, those number of honest parties. And, um, and now, well, the, it, it, it works in the same way. 
So basically, the parties uh, decrypt their shares, and then uh, they apply Lagrange interpolation in the exponent to reconstruct each of the L secrets, which are now defined to be H raised to uh, L evaluations of the polynomial that are in different points than the, than the shares. Uh, now, this has a problem because um, computing these values requires O n squared exponentiations. Uh, because every every uh, ev every coordinate there requires O n exponentiations to be computed, so it seems that we haven't uh, won so much. Um, uh, however, we can uh, we can notice that um, if we have already had the reconstructor that has computed all these values, then any other party that wants to check the correctness of this reconstruction. Um, can do so with uh, only O of n exponentiations by using some trick, some technique that we introduced in Scrape that basically um, consists in choosing uh, a code word. So basically, if, if you look at the polynomials uh, evaluated in the secrets and in the uh, shares corresponding to this, or the points corresponding to these t plus l shares, um, that uh, forms a code word in, a, in, in, in the code given by all the valuations of polynomials of degree at most t plus l minus 1. So you can now take a, a random code word in the dual of that code, and uh, it has to happen that if you compute this expression here, uh, this gives you the identity. And if it gives you the if, if you compute this and, and, gives, and it gives you the identity, uh, with very high probability, uh, you will... Uh, well, it, it will happen that these values here are indeed the, uh, the evaluations of the polynomial in the, in the right points. So, the way that this plays out in our beacon is that uh, for each secret vector to be reconstructed, um, we will uh, choose a random uh, small committee of reconstructors. So, one, one point here is that uh, at this point, when, when the shares have already been decrypted, uh, everything can be already computed. The output can be computed. So we are just uh, trying to find a way of computing it uh, as efficiently as possible. So for that, we, we, we choose a random small committee, as I say, of uh, log n parties. And then each of the parties in that uh, committee will reconstruct uh, the, the secret value. Um, then the remaining parties can check uh, if, uh, if there is one or at least one of these reconstructions that is correct. If none uh, are correct, then uh, then that means that all reconstructors, reconstructors were corrupted, and then the remaining parties can just compute the, this uh, secret vector by themselves. But this will only happen in a small uh, amount of uh, secret vectors. Um, the other uh, improvement that we have is the randomness extraction. So. Um, after the, the reconstruction phase, uh, we will have uh, reconstructed, as I said before, the, the m vectors of this form. And these are the vectors that uh, were shared by uh, uh, all dealers that shared the vectors correctly. But the adversary may have decided on t of these vectors, so we want that um, the, the, the result of the computation is not biasable. So it, should be uniform uh, condition to what the adversary has decided. Uh, so in order to do that, we, what we will do is to apply in every coordinate of, of these vectors, um, we will apply a, a, a resilient, a linear t resilient function. And these functions were introduced by Chor et al. in 85. Um, and that means that if, if, if this linear function is given by a, a matrix M, uh, we will apply m in the exponent to all these values, and we will get uh, some uh, other uh, some other values. And then, uh, if we do that in every coordinate, uh, we will define that to be the output. Um, so now, this this Taylor-Sinn function, I didn't say it, but uh, what it does is basically uh, what we need. Uh, so basically, it, it uh, yields an output that is uh, uniformly random um, as long as uh, uh, all but t of the of the coordinates um, in the input were uh, were uniformly random so it doesn't matter that the adversary has fixed t of them um, 
In fact, if we um, if we have uh, T-resilient functions given by a transpose of random on the matrices, and uh, this allows us to have an output of size, uh, if, if you look here, uh, m minus t. Um, so that means, uh, in the end, that we can have an output size of O n squared. Um, so, in, in fact, uh, we can even take a matrix that uh, is also van der Monde, not only its transpose is van der Monde, but, uh, but the matrix itself is van der Monde, and then we can apply uh, fast Fourier transform in the exponent to compute this. And this gives us a very nice uh, um, complexity. So, all in all, what we have in the end is that uh, our construction has uh, requires n squared log n exponentiations in the group per party to produce an output of size n squared. So that means log n exponentiations per, per output and, and per party. Uh, in the best case, where we don't need to enter this uh, reconstruction phase because everyone has or every party has uh, revealed their, their committed values, then uh, we have a number of exponentiations uh, per output uh, and party to be constant. So this is three uh, orders of magnitude uh, below uh, Uroboros, and uh, that fits very well with the uh, nomenclature in, in golf, and uh, because it is an albatros. Apart from these um, uh, asymptotical improvements in the computational complexity, which uh, apply to uh, to the case where t is a smaller fraction of, of n, um, we also get an, an improvement, uh, concrete improvement, in the case where uh, t is any um, any dishonest uh, minority. Um, so. So basically, if, if you remember, what the dealer needs to prove is that uh, the encrypted shares are of this form, so uh, public key of ith party raised to the evalua ith evaluation of a polynomial of the right degree, t plus l minus 1. Um, and, the, and the proof that we introduce here is actually quite standard, uh, or, I mean, very similar to the usual sigma protocols, so basically the, the, the dealer uh, chooses another polynomial, another random polynomial of, of uh, the same degree and constructs uh, the values that are the public keys uh, raised to the evaluations of that polynomial. Now gets a challenge, uh, usually by uh, Fiat uh, Shamir, and she now like just publishes the polynomial sets, uh, which is uh, E times P plus R. Um, and so basically this works because now the, the, the verifier can just check that this uh, equation here holds for every i, for every every share. And by checking this, I mean, it, this guarantees that uh, sigma i are constructed in the right way. And this avoids uh, the discrete logarithm equality proofs that we had before and leads to actually a better concrete complexity. It's not an asymptotic improvement but uh, um, of, of, of any order, but it just uh, um, shaves off a, a constant. Um, the third contribution that we have is to, to construct two versions of uh, our uh, be uh, beacon that are uh, secure under the universal composability framework. One is based on uh, non-interactive Sino knowledge uh, for uh, discrete logarithm relations, so uh, you see secure implementation of that. And uh, the second is based on um, on a notion of uh, UC secure homomorphic commitments that have designated verifier. So basically that means that the commitment is sent to uh, a designated verifier and this verifier can later open its correct uh, opening to third parties. So it is interesting actually that this uh, that th this second uh, um, uh, construction only requires to rely on the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption and not the decisional Diffie-Hellman assumption. So it's a weaker assumption. So that was it. Uh, thanks for watching.